Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our How Digital is Transforming Healthcare webinar. Uh, a few things before we get started. We are recording this session, and we'll be sending out the link to everyone tomorrow. And you can ask questions in the GoToWebinar panel that we'll get to at the end. So we're excited to be hosting this with our partner, Propelix. And Propelix creates mobile strategies and world-class apps for the enterprise. They are founded in 2011, and they focus on the Fortune 500, and they're 100% focused on digital, mobile, and emerging tech. And they've assisted many companies globally with the development of their mobile strategies and solutions, and here is a sampling of their customers. Now for our speakers, James is a mobile strategist and solutions architect bringing 20 years of experience in executive leadership, strategic planning, and business development. And he has 10 years um, experience in mobile, assisting clients um, across industries. And he's recently been working on um, some really large companies in oil and gas, um, biotech and pharmaceuticals, and many other industries. Then, uh, Alani is a business analyst and mobile strategist also at Propellix, um, and he'll also be speaking with us, with us today. And finally, we have Jakku, who runs product at Kinde, and he's um, always excited to help Global 1000 customers with their mobile projects as well. So today, we'll be covering how digital is transforming healthcare, why healthcare is right for digital disruption, which technologies will most impact healthcare and transform the patient experience, key healthcare use cases for mobile and emerging technologies, and how a comprehensive enterprise mobile strategy enables you to take advantage of the capabilities and value of emerging technologies. And I'll hand it over to James. All right, thanks Jacqueline, and uh, thanks everybody for joining us today. We're very excited to, uh, to talk about uh, what we're seeing in the industry, and especially around mobile and emerging technologies and how they're disrupting uh, healthcare across patients and providers and doctors and so forth. So hopefully you guys will get some uh, good value out of today's uh, session here. And we, we look forward to uh, addressing any questions that you may have at the end of the presentation day. So, you know, mobile technology has really been impacting us all for many years now. Uh, it's changed how we've engaged and we function in our personal lives as well as our professional lives. So really, it's just been a matter of time before mobile technologies started impacting us in the healthcare space. Um, and so one of the interesting things I saw in some of my recent uh, research was uh, a report from McKinsey here that shows that 50% of strategic technology bud budgets in healthcare over the next five years are really gonna be focused on digital transformation. And so what we mean by that is, is you know, healthcare organizations are recognizing that mobile and emerging technologies are here. They've been proven over the last few years uh, and even decade uh, in different industries such as retail, manufacturing and financial and so forth. So they're now really heavily focused today and even over the next five years as we're seeing on how they can leverage those technologies as well across the whole healthcare ecosystem in improving operational efficiencies, uh, data security, and certainly most importantly, their you know, patient engagement experiences. And so the first thing I'm gonna talk about really is why is healthcare ripe for the digital disruption? And so as you can see on, on the screen here, there's a lot of these key buzzwords out there. So artificial intelligence and electronic health records, blockchain, interoperability, virtual reality, wearables, security. These are all vital considerations and emerging technologies that healthcare organizations, as I mentioned, are starting to focus on. If they're not focusing on it now, that they should be focusing on. Uh, these technologies uh, have been used, a lot of them, uh, for the last few years. They're proven out uh, in, in different industries and are already showing quite a bit of value and benefits out there. And so we're now starting to see healthcare organizations looking at you know, how these are going to help them 
really improve a lot of their capabilities and in, in their service offerings and, and how they operate on a daily basis. So uh, one of the things that we're going to talk about over the next couple minutes here is really how this is disrupting uh, the healthcare market today and what we think it's going to disrupt it going in, looking into the future. And so as a heavy mobile user myself and strategist, I've worked with a lot of companies uh, across different industries, different users, whether it's been consumer users or you know, B2B or B2E. And, you know, I've seen really how mobile uh, has certainly changed our behaviors and expectations as as mobile users. And I feel we've actually become, become really spoiled and even a little bit entitled because mobile has really given us this great ability to access information anytime, anywhere across multiple different devices now. Um, and so, you know, as we saw it starting to really disrupt uh, how we were doing things in retail with, you know, um, mobile shopping apps to, you know, fitness apps, and then now banking apps and so forth the last few years, you know, we're now starting to see again, as I mentioned, this uh, mentality and mind shift in coming into healthcare now and healthcare organizations starting to look at, well, if these have been successful in these other industries, how can we use it now in our industry? And so, I think with this continuous evolution of mobile technologies and all the different ways we can access, consume, use, and share information across, you know, smartphones and tablets and wearables, and now the internet of things and uses of uh, like augmented reality and virtual reality and artificial intelligence technologies, we're really seeing how, you know, this is going to change the way we're interacting, um, you know, with each other, as well as with our business partners and, and change our expectations. And so one of the recent reports I was reading um, in preparation for today was the top healthcare issues of 2017. And this statistic is a simple one, but it, it's also very powerful in that it shows that 78% of consumers of ages 25 to 34 answered yes when they were uh, asked if they would be willing to incorporate a video game into their treatments if they were diagnosed with a, a form of mental health problem. And so, you know, this isn't new technology. It's referred to as what we call gamification in the industry here. But it's a pretty simple example how just even this type of technology in, in mobile has really changed how us as consumers uh, and even patients, for that matter, are willing and want to engage now. And so we are seeing a lot of healthcare organizations incorporating some type of mobile technologies, whether it's gamification or chatbots and things like that into their practices and, and certainly how they're delivering their services to their patients or even training their healthcare professionals um, and students that are coming out of the universities and education today. So a, a couple examples here uh, just to, to show you what we're seeing across like pharmaceutical companies and, and healthcare organizations. Uh, Takeda is a company that recently launched a mobile app that's helping patients with GERD or heartburn manage their symptoms using the smartwatch. And so again, they're, they're leveraging some of these wearable technologies now and, and created a simple app that's providing some benefit and certainly real time because it's on their smartwatch on uh, helping people manage their symptoms around heartburn. Uh, one of the clients we work with, AstraZeneca, has, uh, has started over the last couple of years in, incorporating mobile technologies, both to help in the training of their clinical educators but they're also uh, using it now for clinic, ed, clinical educators and improving their engagements uh, with their patients as they're, they're meeting with them to talk about diabetes and, and uh, respiratory care services and, and the treatments around that. Uh, and then the last example is Mango Health. Um, this is a, an app uh, that is actually rewarding patients for sticking to their medicine regimen. So as you can see, there's different applications, different uh, use cases here. And these are some very simple ones, but we are really starting to see mobile become more widely adopted uh, across the healthcare uh, industry and, and different uh, solutions providers out there. And so on this slide, I really want to talk about today is how this is changing the behaviors and expectations of these healthcare organizations and these professionals. So another survey that uh, I was uh, reading was from Healthcare IT News, and they, they pulled 95 healthcare executives on various technology topics and initiatives for 2017. 
And so when they were asked, uh, you know, which technologies they're planning to implement or upgrade in 2017, it was overwhelming that 58%, so over half of these healthcare executives said population health technologies was going to be one of their top initiatives because they felt it's going to really enable them uh, to deliver a better patient experience. And, you know, we, we all kind of recognize, I think, healthcare uh, has been one of the industries that's been a little bit slower in adoption and, you know, not really a fast follower by any means compared to other industries when it's, you know, looking at adopting any type of new technologies, especially mobile or anything emerging for that matter. However, again, we're seeing this uh, mentality and the behavior shifting in our healthcare executives and organizations, and they're, they're starting to, to really focus more on how uh, they can start incorporating these uh, new technologies to transform the services they're providing across that ecosystem. So, you know, exchanging uh, healthcare records more securely using things like blockchain uh, technologies is, is starting to become more of a, a focus these days. How to leverage mobile or wearable type devices to, to provide better services with their, their patients, giving them access to real time information. Uh, or to be able to do some self-diagnosis and such. And, and we're going to talk about uh, some of these examples in a little bit more detail here in a few minutes. But so what we're seeing now is really these healthcare organizations, because of uh, the disruption we're seeing now with mobile and emerging technologies, is that companies are starting to reprioritize their business drivers and they're starting to, um, you know, redefine them because, you know, with a recent uh, presidential change and a lot of changes in the government, uh, and regulatory and privacy acts out there. We're seeing this, this uh, transformation, if you will, from what we're calling value-based to more value, or excuse me, volume-based to more value-based uh, care models. Um, and so, uh, as we mentioned, that because of this transformation in the, the models here and how we're delivering healthcare, we're seeing a lot of these organizations uh, starting to refocus their efforts and initiatives. Um, and so to accomplish these initiatives, uh, you know, organizations are looking to embrace uh, and leverage mobile technologies uh, and emerging technologies, for that matter, uh, to uh, uh, help modernize and, and deliver better services. And so, you know, emerging technologies, it, it, we're seeing a lot of cool things out there, you know, certainly with drones and, and the virtual reality and augmented reality that you know, has been introduced to more of the retail kind of gaming environments. And certainly now over the last couple of years in, in manufacturing is companies like UPS and Amazon are testing how to use drones to deliver, uh, you know, packages and, and things from that nature. Um, you know, a lot of us probably felt that this is going to be far fetched and, and we wouldn't see this type of technology ever introduced to healthcare, but it, it really is becoming a reality. Uh, you know, as a Star Trek fan, I certainly thought I'd never ever see the day when a tricorder would become a reality in our healthcare space. And, uh, you know, guess what? It's, it's out there now. There was a, a competition recently launched about a year ago by uh, Qualcomm, and they actually uh, had a lot of participa uh, participants from all around the world uh, compete in this competition to come up with a tricorder, uh, and they gave them specific requirements. And there was a designated winner, and they're actually now launching this and starting to test this in the uh, the consumer space uh, this year. So, you know, we are seeing um, some pretty quick evolution in the use of these uh, leading edge technologies like a tricorder starting to be tested and will soon uh, you know, be introduced out there uh, for us to use. And you, know, you say, why a tricorder? You know, with the modern technologies and the use of electronic healthcare records, it's really given us the ability to make the concept of a tricorder become this reality. You know, given the, the ability for patients to do self-diagnosis, given them the ability to make better informed decisions in, in, about themselves, saving them time from having to schedule doctor's appointments that could be costly and, and time consuming and stuff, really is going to create this disruption in the healthcare. But it's, it's a good thing, because I, I think, you know, for giving the ability for patients to do self-diagnosis, and they can, you know, treat themselves or, or find out some quick answers on things that will save time for them having to schedule doctor's appointments and things and certainly save time for doctors for treating basic, you know, healthcare needs. This will enable the doctors to really focus more on critical needs out there for patients that, 
might have, you know, uh, higher needs, you know, in, in more critical illnesses out there. So I think this is, uh, you know, one of the positive impacts we're seeing in, in disruptions with the healthcare on that. Um, and so what, uh, what we're also seeing is like chatbots in the use of uh, artificial intelligence out there, uh, providing uh, the capability for the self-diagnosis. So definitely something that's not new. It's already been introduced. There's apps out there. And so, you know, with that, I'm actually going to turn things over to Lonnie. He's going to share some of these cool technologies and things that are being introduced and tested and ones that are actually already out there in production today. So, Lonnie, I'm going to turn it over to you here and give you control. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, James. And as James mentioned, uh, I'll be talking about you know, which technologies will not only have a huge impact on healthcare, but how they're being used today and how organizations and healthcare companies are, are able to utilize these technologies to advance, you know, the, the patient doctor relationship. And let me get to the next slide. So the first technology that I wanna talk about is augmented reality. Augmented reality uses technology to superimpose information on the world we see, such as images and sounds, that adds to normal reality. Now, augmented reality has already been proven to be beneficial in the healthcare industry. It provides real-time data and assistance during complicated surgical procedures, all the way to supporting aftercare and administration. With this technology being so new, it is amazing to see the impact that it's already had on the field and exciting to know that we've only just broken the, the surface with AR and what it can really do for both patients and doctors. This market is projected to reach $1.5 billion by 2020 with advancements that will surely revolutionize the industry. Now, in both aspects, there are benefits, both for patients and doctors. For patients, augmented reality can significantly improve the quality of treatment they receive from their healthcare providers, and it can also help with the risks associated with some of these procedures. So the risks associated with minimally invasive surgeries can be reduced by keeping the most important information front and center for the surgeon. This way they don't get distracted by all the other small things going on in the operating room and they don't have to worry about you know, small issues that they may face during these procedures. Thanks to AR, a surgeon can now wear smart glasses during a procedure and stay focused at the task at hand. This will not only minimize the mistakes and reduce the need to multitask, but it will ensure that the patient is the focal point of the room and that they're safe during the entire process. Now for doctors, augmented reality is twofold. Firstly, it provides students pursuing medical careers with training and education needed to excel in their fields of study. AR allows trainee physicians to better visualize health issues that they'll be treating. And then secondly, the technology will also enhance the ability to diagnose and treat conditions by allowing them to access real-time data and patient information a lot faster than ever before. AR can also help nurses with things like finding veins to draw blood. And if you've been to the hospital like I have, sometimes that is a very tricky process. So being able to have that confidence with these technologies makes the whole process a lot smoother and a lot faster for everybody. Now, while it's of undoubted importance that medical students need to understand the theory behind surgical procedures, disease pathology, human anatomy, they also have to understand the real life implications. AR technology will allow medical training to become much more interactive and immediate, as opposed to, you know, reading books upon books and taking test after test in regards to different healthcare procedures, different diseases, you can now display anatomical information on a 3D printed human skeleton, allowing the student to revise, you know, things like the names of the bones, while offering a better understanding of how the human body operates. By having this interactive experience, you're no longer relying on words on a book or, or notes on a page to instruct you in regards to what you need to do. Now you can confidently make those incisions and make those options on your own with the help of the technology that's available to them. As we've already touched upon, the approach to minimally invasive surgeries can be approved by utilized AR technologies. 
And the same reigns true for even more complex surgeries as well. Lives can be saved by allowing surgeons to access information quicker without having to shift their attention from machine to machine or from the patient receiving the treatment. Vital statistics will be kept in their eye sight as they operate without being distracted and detrimental to the quality of care being provided. A lot of small things can happen in an operating room and it's a very tense situation regardless of the procedure going on. So to have that confidence and to have that insurance that you know everything that you're focusing on and everything that you need to work on is right in front of you is, is very nice, not only for the doctor, but the patient as well. And it creates a sense of comfortability while working on these patients. Products already exist today like Aid For You uh, that is available for anyone to download, which was created in hope to help somebody that you know may collapse right in front of you. This application shows you automated external defibrillators near you so that you can do more than just you know quickly dial 911 because oftentimes the, the emergency vehicles run into issues, they don't get there in time, and the patient needs more help immediately than over a long term. Apps like this help to make sure that these patients get the proper care they need as soon as possible. And then also soon to be commercially available is technology such as Microsoft's HoloLens. This can not only change the way doctors learn about the human anatomy, but also help them to diagnose patients more effectively by overlaying CT scans and other imagery onto a patient's body. This helps doctors understand you know, issues that are going on within the body without necessarily needing to do all the surgery at first. And then by having this knowledge beforehand, they could plan for better and easier solutions for that patient. So the next technology that I wanna talk about is artificial intelligence. So there's currently a shortage of over 7 million physicians, nurses, and other healthcare workers worldwide. And that gap is showing no sign of slowing down. Doctors are stretched very thin, especially in underserved areas, to respond to the growing needs of the population. Now, with the lack of doctors and the lack of nurses, you can see that not everybody may get the, the health care needs that they, they desire, and they need to find alternative solutions in order to take care of themselves. Training physicians and health workers has always proven to be a difficult process that requires years upon years of education and experience before you can even really get into the field and start working with patients. Fortunately enough for all of us, artificial intelligence is already available and can help the healthcare sector to overcome the present and many of the future challenges that we're seeing today. There are a number of ways that AI has already proven to be beneficial to the healthcare industry, which I'll shortly touch upon. And the first being AI health assistants. One of the most basic yet efficient use cases of artificial intelligence is to optimize the clinical process. Traditionally, and I'm sure that you've all been through this, when a patient feels ill, they go to the doctor, they get their vital signs checked, they ask any questions, and then they get a prescription, which ultimately will help the patient feel better. There are some rare cases where that's not the case and they have to go back for a repeat visit, get additional recommendations and then follow up that way. But now AI assistance can cover a large part of clinical and outpatient services. This can free up a doctor's times tenfold to attend to more critical cases where you know, this kind of technology may not be as beneficial. Examples of AI apps are like your MD. This is an AI powered mobile app that provides basic health care. And I'm sure that people have either used it or have heard of others that have used it. This chatbot asks users to identify their symptoms and it provides very easy to understand information about their medical conditions. It has a vast network of information and it links symptoms to causes. This assistant uses natural language processing and generation to provide a rich and fluid experience for that user so that they're confident that whatever is provided to them is something they can accurately try and see to see if it helps with their different illnesses or their different symptoms. UMD suggests different steps and measures to remedy the illness, including warning users when they actually need to see the doctor. And that may be the last step, but it is smart enough to understand if a case is serious enough that maybe this chatbot isn't the best option and that seeking medical attention will be the best route. 
So it has proven to be beneficial for patients around the globe, and it creates more of a dialogue between doctors and patients. Now, when a patient is going to the doctor's office, they're equipped with all the knowledge that they need and all the research that they've been able to gather to understand, you know, what's worked, what hasn't, here's what they've done, and it creates that dialogue with the doctor so that they can now understand different prescriptions that they can provide and different solutions that they may not have considered that creates a very user-friendly experience for both parties. By having this conversational style office visit, you not only are able to express concerns, but you're able to receive feedback on the research that you've already been able to do. Another aspect of AI that will make a significant impact is early and precise diagnosis. The treatment and prevention of rare diseases is often dependent on detecting the symptoms at the right time. And in many cases, early diagnosis can also result in complete cure. But conversely, a late or wrong diagnosis can have damaging or potentially fatal results. Human skills and experience are limited and hard to learn when it comes to examining images and samples making reliable decisions. These AIs can work to quickly ingest millions of samples in short orders and see the useful patterns. Many institutions are investing millions upon millions of dollars on this in order to help, to help develop healthcare solutions. But the real question for AI is what lies ahead? AI has many challenges that we can see today and some that we haven't even predicted for the future. Healthcare is no exception, especially where privacy is concerned. Medical information is sensitive and institutions that handle it need to understand if they lose that data, they're liable to different lawsuits and patients that are unhappy with the care that they received. But with the proper implementation, AI can help to personalize patient engagement, deliver remote care, and improve patient diagnosis. Companies like Google have already seemed to figure out that this is the right path and have projects like Google DeepMind. This project is able to process hundreds of thousands of medical information within minutes, and they're actively working with different healthcare providers to utilize the data gathered to improve eye treatment for patients. Similarly, IBM Watson launched a project called Watson Paths, which consists of two cognitive computing technologies that can be used by an AI algorithm, Watson. They're expected to help physicians make more informed and more accurate decisions faster to call new insights from electronic medical records. It's, so it's clearly obvious that companies are not only invested in AI as a means to improve healthcare, but they also see the importance of being able to provide stronger solutions for patients. Another way that some firms are looking to improve healthcare is by using blockchain as a solution. Oh, sorry, I think I just went too far. Uh, James, would you be able to go back one slide, please? Thank you. So lastly, I wanna talk about blockchain. And this may be a term that you're not used to or haven't heard of as it was started in the, in the finance industry. But at its essence, blockchain is a distributed list of all transactions across a peer-to-peer -peer network. And to put it simply, you can think of blockchain as more of a data structure containing transactions that are shared and synced among different nodes in a network. Now, although I said that's simple, there's a lot more complexity to blockchain and a lot more that really goes into it. But blockchain transactions are logged pub publicly and in chronological order. Databases show an ever-expanding list of blocks each time that are stamped and connected to the block that came before it, hence constituting a blockchain. Now, each block can't be changed, deleted, or modified. It is a permanent record that a given transaction took place and occurred. And this is the main reason that healthcare organizations and executives are very excited about blockchain technology and the opportunity that it provides for data security. Transactions are encrypted and must be verified by the network. The potential that the growth of blockchain could see could benefit population health, medical records, patient-generated data, you know, automated adju <clears throat> adjudication of claims, and so much more. A small example would be to take a master patient index of a hospital. Hospitals currently have so many ways to enter a simple date of birth, and there's no real way to standardize it once it's been entered. 
blockchain can solve this problem by tying patients to their data rather than their to, to their identity. The security potential and interoperability of blockchain is so significant as it can secure data as it's exchanged among healthcare organizations. And this is done in a format that is usable for various clinicians across the care continuum. So there'll be no more loss of data or misplacing of data between one hospital to another. And as I've been through, you know, switching hospitals can be somewhat tedious, but with technologies like this, it makes it a lot smoother and a lot easier to manage. Now, though blockchain is a new process in the healthcare industry, it is sure to open many doors for technological advancement. Now I'm going to turn it back to James to discuss why an enterprise mobile strategy is important. Thanks, Alani. And wow, that it's pretty cool some of the technologies you were talking about there and uh, how they're already being introduced and, and used already today across the healthcare continuum and, and certainly things like blockchain that you were just talking about where it was used in the financial industry, you know, back from like 2008. Now we're starting to look at it for healthcare and how it can benefit that. So that's that's pretty cool stuff there. So as Lonnie said, that what I'm going to talk about next is, you know, why it's really important to have an enterprise strategy to harness the power of these cool technologies like blockchain and AR and virtual reality and so forth. And as we've been talking about um, over the last 15, 20 minutes, you know, there is quite a few capabilities and, and benefits that mobile and, and emerging technologies can deliver across the healthcare industry, whether you're an organization, a professional, and certainly as a patient receiving the, those services. Uh, but, you know, before healthcare organizations just dive in and, and start using these, these uh, new technologies and, and ones that certainly are new, but are now being introduced to healthcare, um, it's really important to, to have a, a plan, a strategic plan, a strategy around how to leverage these technologies. Uh, you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of healthcare, some of the major healthcare organizations anyway, um, have already got a plan devised that's been well thought out. It's pretty comprehensive. They've been going through these modernization efforts for the past decade or so, and they're starting to already uh, implement and, and harness the power of these uh, these new technologies in and introduce them out there in the marketplace. And as Lonnie says, I've recently also had some uh, recent visits through my doc, uh, my daughter's uh, uh, was diagnosed with a brain tumor. And so the hospital that we went to is one of the most renowned ones in the country. And they are actually already starting to use some of these technologies. So it was cool to see it firsthand out there. But I still think as a, as a mobile strategist, you know, we've worked with a lot of companies, small and large. We're, we're still saying no matter whether it's healthcare or banking and stuff that most companies haven't really devised that that strategy yet. They haven't really thought about all the implications and the complexities that mobility and these enterprise, uh, you know, uh, these new emerging technologies, I mean, uh, can introduce out there. You know, so when, when we talk about complexities and, and things like that, you know, as we mentioned, there's, and you guys are probably using them today, smartwatches and wearables and and the Internet of Things type technology uh, in our on our daily uh, personal lives. Uh, and some of you may be already using them in your professional lives. But, you know, these complexities you know, range from different form factors to different ways that you're presenting data and accessing data and, and the securities around that. So probably one of the biggest things that we recognize with uh, when we're consulting with our, our clients and out there is um, the maturity level clients have across uh, their IT organizations and the readiness to support mobile and, and enterprise technologies, uh, you know. So when you're looking at security and infrastructure and mobile device management or application management, uh, their capabilities to design and deliver support these uh, mobile technologies or emerging technologies, not only today, but continuously as you go in the future, there's a lot to really think about there. And what we're seeing is companies have done a great job. Even healthcare organizations have done a good job over the last few decades in, in really getting the maturities level uh, up to support web-based applications, client servers, mainframes, et cetera. But even though mobile's been around for 10 plus years and, and a lot of us are using, as I mentioned, in our, in our personal lives, and some of you may be using it today as, uh, in your professional careers, a lot of companies still aren't thinking about all these different complexities and how they're going to address those. And so 
that propel. It's one of the things we always recommend is, is going in and do that assessment, you know, this what we call maturity readiness assessment and look at all these different aspects of your IT organization and also look at your business from your business processes. How is mobile and emerging technology going to impact the way you're doing business today and the way you will do business tomorrow when you're looking at introducing these new technologies to improve your patient experiences or operational efficiencies and so forth. So I think as you look at that, you have to look at all those different factors and, uh, and you know, start addressing those, uh, those gaps that you may find out there. And so with this modernization of your platforms and introducing of new technologies, you know, it certainly is going to, you know, introduce some risk. And what we're seeing out there is that unfortunately, Hackers every day are targeting healthcare systems more than ever. Uh, there was a recent study that I was reading uh, called the Global State of Information Security Survey, uh, and it showed phishing is really topping the list in, in healthcare security issues, followed closely by email compromises and then ransomware. Uh, and so it's a very real threat. And as I've mentioned, we're seeing a lot of organizations have done a good job of protecting their applications, stuff that may be really confined inside of their enterprise. But as you start introducing these new technologies and new engagement uh, methods uh, through different types of devices or uh, native applications or hybrid or mobile web, you know, you're opening up, you know, yourself for potential uh, new uh, threats and, and security risks there. And so, again, that's why we stress it's really important to, from a maturity level to uh, really take a step back, look at all the different aspects of your IT organization across your business and, and how you're engaging with your patients and interacting uh, internally and, and look at what does current state look like, engage resources as, as you need to, to help you figure out what future state should look like. But, you know, start thinking about what are my business drivers? Who are my target users? If we're going to start introducing emerging technologies and mobility, uh, are we targeting our patients? Are we targeting doctors and healthcare professionals? Are we uh, looking at solutions that can improve how we interact with our, our business partners, maybe pharmaceutical companies and such, and, and, and really defies a well thought out comprehensive strategy, identifying where your gaps are, putting a roadmap in place on how to address those gaps, you know, whether it's process improvements or introducing new technologies or, or improving the existing technologies you have today. I, I think that's really critical uh, to do so. Um, and so, that being said, I'm actually going to turn it over now to Jaku, and he's going to talk to you about, you know, uh, the importance of uh, mobile application development and how it can really accelerate that mobile strategy. So, Jaku, I will turn it over to you here. Thank you, uh, James. Um, so, what um, I'm going to talk about now is, um, you know, how um, a mobile application platform um, can really help you uh, realize uh, some of these exciting things that uh, both James and um, Alani uh, spoke about, you know, how you can uh, really accelerate your mobile strategy, get, get to these types of exciting solutions uh, really, really quickly, and um, how an application platform um, helps you get there. Um, so um, at a very high level, uh, James, can you go to the next slide or uh, hand me the keyboard mouse control, please? There you go. Um, so at a, at a very high level, um, one of the things that a um, mobile application platform gets you is to go from um, what you need and bridge the gap between what you need um, and what you have today. Right. So, for example, some of the things that you need to uh, deliver on uh, some of these cool applications, uh, leverage blockchain technologies, leverage uh, artificial intelligence, augmented reality, uh, whatever the case might be, and create real five-star uh, user experiences for, for your uh, customers. Um, you really need a lot of things. Right. You, you need to be able to have an IDE and tools to build this. You need to be able to secure the data flow need some type of middleware services, and then finally you need to be able to operate all of this. Um, you need to be able to run on any type of client device, right? The, uh, whether it's a, a watch or a sensor or a, um, or a desktop or, or the web. Um, and what you have 
um, today is really uh, enterprise infrastructure, enterprise systems and services um, that were built for the web era. And not only that, um, you also have to deal with a lot of security uh, controls, governance, and compliance that are in place, right? Um, that really uh, can somewhat uh, be an impediment to uh, to enable you to deliver really quickly. Um, and really, uh, uh, an application platform like Kinway uh, helps you uh, bridge this capabilities gap, right? Uh, to to go from what you have to what you need, uh, and we provide a complete uh, secure uh, backend as a service platform in the cloud, ready to go, immediately available, uh, delivered as a managed service with guaranteed SLAs, um, backups, disaster recovery, all the reliability that you need uh, with, with essentially a, a click of a button. So uh, more specifically, um, if, if you drill down um, on, on an application uh, of the kind that we are talking about here today. Um, this application starting on the left side is typically um, going to connect to multiple user data sources, whether these data sources are on your smartphone um, or on a, on a sensor that you wear or um, people are now talking about implants in your body. Um, and these data sources um, can you know, connect via an application on your phone um, or other types of uh, web uh, or IoT style applications. Um, and you also have, um, if you look at the top middle here, you'll typically have uh, some type of web application or a responsive web application that uh, provides useful information um, from the patient uh, to providers. Uh, to data scientists that might want to do research on uh, population health uh, as a whole, for example. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, web apps that are really analytic style dashboards that provide very useful information uh, to providers and uh, other research folks. Um, and on the right side of this picture, um, you may want to pull uh, electronic health records, EHRs, from, from systems like Epic and Cerner and Allscripts, uh, systems like that, uh, into your application, into those dashboards that, that you're building. Um, and potentially, uh, a lot of the sensor data that is being collected is sent to IoT platforms, uh, being analyzed there, and then needs to be pulled into these dashboards. Um, and all these um, applications that your patients are uh, accessing. And really, you need to keep the patient engaged at all times, so it's very important that you have access to information in real time, the latest and greatest information, and all of the wonderful insights you can get from the uh, AI type tools that uh, Malani spoke about earlier. So what Kinve uh, allows you to do is we provide uh, a HIPAA compliant cloud where uh, we can take care of all of the backend needs, you know, pulling data from these uh, very complex healthcare systems that are out there, uh, pulling data from IoT systems, um, and making it readily available to a, a mobile or web application developer so they don't have to, as you're building out an architecture like this, um, your developer doesn't have to worry about where this data is coming from. How is it secured? What type of protocol do I have to talk uh, to get at this data? What type of data format do I have to learn? They don't have to worry about anything, right? Uh, they just use and leverage a Kinway SDK um, that gives them some simple methods to uh, log in users, to do user management, to uh, get data, and um, they can quickly build applications, uh, prototype these applications, test it against a uh, uh, for example, a pilot or a beta user base, get quick feedback, iterate through that feedback. So you're focused on the user experience of the application, whether that's uh, a patient-facing user experience or provider-facing user, user experience. You're focused on that user experience rather than having to worry about all of the back-end systems. Um, and all this is provided with end-to-end -end security and compliance. So um, while you're building it, you can be assured that 
the methods that you're using to access data are all secure, all the protocols you're using are secure, the keys are managed in a compliant way, um, all of the security keys. Um, and while this entire solution architecture is in operation uh, post-production, um, that you have access to data, uh, so your uh, chief uh, security officer or a compliance officer can access the data to ensure that um, you know compliance is maintained uh, during operations as well. Um, to dig into this architecture, uh, you know one level deeper. Um, if you look at this platform itself, uh, starting from the top of this picture here, um, you might be building again one or more apps. You can build this, uh, these apps in any technology that you want. This again. It's bridging another gap um, between what you need and what you have. You know, what you need is to build these apps fast, and you may not have access to all the skill sets that you need to build this app quickly. And that's why uh, we can may provide client libraries uh, in multiple different technologies. So, uh, you know, if you have skill sets that are um, available in C Sharp to write applications in Xamarin, for example. Uh, you can leverage those skill sets. If you have JavaScript skill sets and they want to build uh, using Angular, uh, you can uh, leverage those skill sets um, or Ionic. Or if you have native iOS or Android skills, um, you can leverage those as well. So we have uh, libraries, Kinway libraries in 12 different platforms uh, that enable you to build these apps that abstract your front end developers from all of the um, back in systems of record that you see at the bottom in the bottom of this picture. Um, and then just walking through the platform, you get things like Identity Connect, for example. How do I log in users? This is a huge, huge problem um, that takes a long time for, pe for people to figure out how to connect to identity systems that are in the enterprise and understand their nuances and be able to access them uh, for a client application. And sometimes, uh, you need to do some uh, identity orchestration. For example, you might use one identity to actually log in your users, and then you need to use a different identity to access information from a uh, EHR system. And how do you uh, keep all this in sync? How do you orchestrate provision identities across multiple systems? Uh, Kinway's Identity Connect handles all this for you. Um, in order to make this a very engaging application, you need to engage your users, make sure um, that they have data uh, updates available in real time. The live service does that for you. You need to be able to send push notifications uh, to your app. Uh, so there's a bunch of engagement features in Kidney that enable you to do that. Um, although we think of applications only from a front-end perspective, most applications have server-side or back-end logic. And so you get an entire platform uh, on which to uh, build, test, and deploy uh, all of the business logic for your application. Uh, you have a, a ready access to a persistent data store that is archived, backed up, highly available um, that, that you can use to store any new data uh, that, that you need for your uh, healthcare solution. A file store to store, uh, you know, maybe images uh, that a patient can take pictures of, um, you know, something that they're experiencing and then uh, send it up for a uh, for a physician to look at. So these images can be stored in our file store or a video. You know, we have an interesting customer that, you know, um, where the physician, um, you know, uploads videos, interesting videos for a patient to look at, uh, to learn about uh, their brain tumor or their surgery that they are about to have, uh, you know, things like that. So the file store, uh, you know, uh, provides a place for you to do that. Um, and then you really need to integrate to your systems of record, right? How do you do that? And how do you do that in a way um, that makes it very transparent uh, to the uh, people actually going to consume it on the client library side? And our rapid and flex services do exactly that, where we either have built-in integrations to all of these EHR systems, Epic, Cerner, Allscripts, Redox, Pocket Doc, you know, systems like that, Salesforce, Health Cloud, um, or if you're fronting some of your systems with API management solutions like uh, Layer 7 or Apigee or something like that, we can readily connect into that. Um, and for authentication, again, 
um, no matter what you're using, whether it's Microsoft Active Directory, Active Directory Federated Services, something from Oracle or Ping or uh, CA or IBM, Tivoli Identity Manager, we can uh, connect to all these things so uh, you don't have to uh, worry about it from, uh, uh, from an application development perspective. So uh, this is the detail uh, of what the uh, platform includes. Right, um, and finally, all of this comes um, with everything you need uh, from a compliance perspective. Right, so we we will sign a BAA with you, uh, our customer, ensuring that we adhere to all aspects of the HIPAA uh, high tech security rule, which includes um, uh, both what we do from a product perspective that and a technology perspective. That's one aspect of this, but it's also what we do from a process and a people perspective to have all the safeguards in place, all the access controls in place, all the audit controls in place, uh, making sure that all transmission of data uh, is, is secured, whether your data is in transit, at rest, uh, or during processing, that uh, it, it is encrypted. And, um, and if we have any breaches uh, or any security incidents, that we have a procedure in place to notify you, to notify the appropriate authorities, um, all of that, right? And this has been audited by, by a third party and attested uh, to meet uh, the HIPAA security rule. So you can rest assured that uh, you don't have to uh, worry about all of these things and doing all these things yourself, right? Um, and, you know, the, the platform itself, uh, has been assessed um, by uh, analysts. Uh, this is one example of a Forrester uh, wave um, of enterprise health clouds uh, that are out there, and uh, we were very excited and pleased to be uh, ranked um, at the top um, of, of this wave, uh, beating out some very well-known, uh, much bigger brands and companies uh, than us, and some of the reasons why we uh, ranked at the top is because the platform is available, fully integrated, um, with best of breed tooling from a front end perspective. So it's easy to consume as opposed to others who have a bag of parts that you have to put together. The pricing is very predictable and easy to budget. It's not a, uh, you know, um, you need a calculator to figure out what your pricing is and the calculator's inputs are things you may not know when you start out. Um, it's a single stack that is fully compliant. Uh, we don't leave compliance as an exercise for you to go to figure out. Um, and once you put this in production, we have all the intelligence available to you in the form of uh, dashboards and other things where your tech support people and your compliance people uh, can provide the best user support for your end users as well as ensure that uh, everything is, uh, is compliant. And finally, you get cloud portability, right? Uh, we run on multiple clouds. Um, and so you, you're not log, locked into a single uh, a single cloud vendor as well. Um, and you, uh, some of you may have heard that uh, Kinway was recently acquired by Progress Software. Just a quick, um, you know, snapshot of Progress, the company. These the guys are uh, Progress is a world leader in application development and deployment technologies with the mission to you know, deliver the best platform for mission-critical business applications. And we are talking about, again, both development and deployment of these applications. Um, and it m makes a lot of sense for them to acquire a best-of-breed um, application platform like Kinway to make that available to the 1,700 ISV partners uh, and customers uh, in worldwide that are using uh, progress uh, technologies today, um, and the very large developer ecosystem uh, that Progress has in place uh, with uh, both the Teleric platform and now the native script platform. Um, so um, that's, uh, that's about the application platform and how it helps you build some of these very transformative uh, healthcare applications. Um, back to you, uh, James. All right, thanks, Jaku, and definitely very informative there on the, the, the importance of having the right platforms and technologies there. So uh, 
to wrap things up, you know, let's just summarize kind of what we've learned today here. So, you know, it's definitely really important for healthcare organizations to have a well-defined digital or mobile uh, transformation strategy. So, you know, really understanding what are your business drivers, having that actionable roadmap that identifies those tactical and strategic initiatives that uh, are imperative that you you complete before you, you know, start in implementing and, and leveraging these new technologies out there. Uh, you know, addressing uh, any of the gaps that you may find if, as you go through and, and really uh, assess the maturity across security, infrastructure, device management, uh, application delivery capabilities, et cetera. Uh, you know, one of the ways we, uh, we, one of the things we recommend companies do is uh, look at using uh, proof of concepts or prototyping. Uh, if you're going to start looking at some of these new technologies, it's a great way, very inexpensive way and quick way to to go out there and test some of these technologies, do a bake off, if you will, see which ones are the best fit for your organization and ultimately the, the target users you're looking at. And as uh, Jakku was just talking about, it's certainly important to have that right uh, platform in place. Uh, one that, you know, uh, harnesses and incorporates a lot of the, the key components that will ensure your data is secure, ensure the uh, interoperability as you're looking at uh, trying to interact with different platforms across the, the healthcare uh, ecosystem and, and continuum there. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that, uh, again, you have those the right tools and, and processes and technologies in place to be successful as you, as you venture forth uh, with your mobile and emerging technology initiatives. Uh, so, that being said, we're, we'll wrap up here uh, and open it up for questions and take the last couple minutes to answer any questions that you all may have. Hi, Jane. So um, I think we have time maybe for one question, um, and this one's for you guys. Uh, what are some of the top use cases that you're seeing in digital health right now? Well, certainly uh, one of the ones that we're seeing is like the chatbots and, and artificial intelligence that Alani was speaking to. Um, you know, the, the app he mentioned, like URMD, I'm a user of it. I think it's great. We're seeing that healthcare organizations using those type of technologies are giving us as patients, as consumers, uh, uh, the ability to do some self-diagnosis and, and maybe save us a trip to the to the, uh, the doctor's office and any cost that may incur from there. Uh, other things that we're seeing is, is certainly around uh, blockchain. Uh, security obviously is top of everybody's list, no matter healthcare or other industries. So we're starting to definitely see the healthcare industry looking at uh, blockchain and how to secure that uh, patient data as they're starting to uh, uh, look at better ways to transmit that data secure, uh, securely across the different healthcare providers and, uh, uh, and professionals out there in different organizations. So those are just a couple of quick ones that we're seeing out there. Certainly, AR and VR technologies are being used today in a lot of the, the healthcare uh, universities and, and colleges as they're training students, as Alani uh, mentioned in, in some of his examples. Great. I think we're at the top of the hour. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for attending, and we'll be sending out the recording tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone.